Let me go to Missy in Mississippi. Hey, Missy. Hey, Dan. Thank you for your service because you do a lot of good and help a lot of people. Thank you. Quickly, I want to tell you my problem. Okay. My husband died several years ago. We had no children. He had no siblings. And I was the only recipient of his will. Okay. He had war bonds, savings bonds, and some of them were very old, and they were in his name only. Okay. And I have been advised on cashing them in. The accountant doesn't know what to do, neither does the bank. So what do I do to cash them in since they're in his name? Um, it's, it's not a big deal that they're in his name, and the bank should have been able to advise you pretty easily. So um, there is a so what you're going to do is you you all you need is a copy of the death certificate and a copy of the will, um, the probated will, uh, and that's all you need. And with that, the bank should be able to cash those. Now, if they won't do it, then you need to uh, send them or drive them, but send them to the Federal Reserve, and that would be the Atlanta's office. You would fall into the Atlanta's Federal Reserve office. So they would have to go, uh, and the bank should be able to walk you through the form in which you've got to sign and and supply the copy of the will and what is called, not the will, but the, what is called the short certificate. It's, it's what you get when a will is probated and completed and settled, and it's called a short certificate, and you get that at the Register of Wills at your county uh, office. So you should be able to get a a, a short certificate. When you get that, you need to send the short certificate, the death certificate, um, maybe a copy of the will they might want, I'm not sure, but, and and along with a, um, there's a, there's a paper that you sign and notarize that is as good as signing every one of those bonds in the back. So you don't have to sign them all. And you need to get that to the Federal Reserve Office. Now, I sh- the bank should have told you all this. I, I Maybe, I guess they don't know. I don't know how they can't know, but maybe they didn't know. But that's all you need to do. It's not a big deal. Uh, and it's not a problem. You should be able to do that relatively easy. The thing about that is, though, Missy, but um, but you still need to do it because, you know, I'm just giving you a heads up on this, that it's taxable to you because and it would be taxable to your husband had he done it. it because it's considered income. It's not considered like capital gains. It's treated differently. Savings bonds are treated differently. So it's treated to you as income. Now, you're, you're going to get taxed on that. So, um, you know, that's that's what you need to do. And it would make a lot of sense if you, you know, to to just go through that procedure. The bank should be able to help you get that paperwork to the Federal Reserve. And if you're thinking about investing that money, what are you thinking about doing with that money, Missy? Um, well, I was just going to let my accountant advise me what to do with it. He just said I needed to go ahead and cash them in, you know, since they were in my husband's name only. I mean, one of the things you could do is if you were thinking about, if you wanted to create a little bit of income, you could do a charitable gift annuity with that money. That would give you some income. And the charitable deduction that you receive would help offset some of the taxes that you're going to pay. And that might make sense. 